I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. This week, we're going to return to our Python playlist and we're going to talk about uh, arrays or lists in Python and the various methods that you have available to you in order to change or modify or, or sort those, those uh, lists uh, in Python. And this is super important because uh, one, of the, one of the key things that's missing out of a lot of um, languages like VBA for example, which I work a ton in, is the fact that uh, those, those languages don't have these methods that Python does have. And so it's one of the reasons that Python is so awesome. And so what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through a series of methods in Python and we're going to demonstrate uh, flexibility that Python has for its arrays. So without further ado, let's get to our array methods in Python. Okay, so knowing your array methods is one of the best things that you can possibly do to make your life easier as a programmer. Trust me, so uh, this will go very quickly. And uh, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just going to create a, an array or a list called uh, fruit. And I'll put in an apple, an orange, a uh, banana, <clears throat> a kiwi, and uh, say uh, a mango and another apple. We'll try that. How does that sound? And then once we have that in place, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create another one, another list called cost. And I'll, I'll add some costs. To this as well uh, so that we have say 40 cents, uh, 50 cents, uh, uh, 75 cents uh, and a kiwi would say be 45 cents and a mango might be a dollar ten or an apple uh, which is another 40 cents uh, just just so that we have something in our list that we can do some comparison on. So if I go ahead and I just say print <clears throat> print our fruit array and if I print our cost array uh, this is going to uh, uh, I'll save that and then I'll I'll hit go F5 and that's gonna give us uh, uh, sort of a representation of our of our array which is what we want to see and so you can see that um, those two arrays have no problem and we're gonna go ahead and make some changes to those the first one we're gonna do is the append method which is simply to to add uh, add an item to the end of the uh, end of the array, and uh, this is nice and easy. If I print our fruit array after that, you can see that it added banana to the end of the array, and we could do the same for our cost uh, array. So we could add an amount into the uh, same position in the cost array and uh, that's going to give us a nice uh, list of costs and so I can go print costs if I hit F5 and save that you'll see that it saved our our last entries there which is great that's exactly what we want to see for append so in our next uh, example we're going to look at the clear method which will just clear our array so if we want to remove all of the uh, objects from our array we can do that so we'll say uh, fruit uh, dot clear and if I print that after I've done that you can see it cleared the array after it was loaded um, so the clear method is is a is a nice one if you just want to empty your array and if you want to uh, copy your array you can uh, use the copy method and uh, by saying fruit dot copy and if I uh, print that one, then you can see I've created a copy variable called fcopy. And that, uh, that one's a nice, nice uh, method as well, in case you need to duplicate your array. Following that method, we can use the count method if we wanted to see how many of a particular item we have in our array. So we could say our apple count is equal to fruit.countApple and that will give us a, a number uh, representing the count of that item so you can see if I hit F5 it creates a 2 uh, it, it evaluates to 2 which is great 
and uh, that's a nice uh, nice one to use. If we change it to say Kiwi, then you can see that one only has one item in it for the count. Next example, we'll put two arrays together. So if, say we wanted to add a bunch of items to our fruit array, and we could do that by making a new array. I'll just call it new, and I'll say that so I can't type uh, orange, and I'll add uh, kiwi, another kiwi, and then I'll add um, another kiwi there, and uh, and that's going to uh, create a new um, a new array for us that we can use to add to our fruit array. So from there we can just say uh, fruit uh, dot extend, and that's going to extend our array, and we'll and we'll put our new array in there as well, and then we'll say print fruit. And uh, that's going to give a give a an error message saying we got our our looks like our uh, uh, bracket wrong. I've got to use a square bracket, not not the round bracket. There we go. And then we'll uh, hit F5 on that, and that's going to give us uh, our initial array with the new array added to the end of it. And that's how you use extend. So what if you wanted to find something in your array? Um, you can find the position of an element in your array by the value of it um, by just saying uh, you can get the position uh, equals fruit dot index <clears throat> and then you can put uh, whatever you want so let's say we want to find banana and then I'll print our position uh, variable uh, which will be numeric and we can hit F5 and you'll see that it gives the number 2 in there and so using the zero base counting uh, you can you can see that that's the uh, actually the third um, element in the array and if I choose Apple which is the first one it gives a zero so just pay attention to that when you're getting your your uh, your index and from there we'll look at the insert statement or the insert method and the insert method is uh, going to allow us to uh, uh, put a value in the middle of our array somewhere exactly where we want it um, and that is a very handy method uh, if you're doing all kinds of changes and, and things like that using your arrays and you need to be able to insert items in there you can you, you can do it this way so if I say print our fruit array there uh, that's going to show us that we put plum in the third position which is 0, 1, 2, 3 and uh, uh, that is how you can use the insert method. and from there we can move on to our next example which is uh, the pop method which will um, basically remove uh, an element from the middle of your uh, array uh, at a specified index location so so if we said fruit.pop3 you can see 0, 1, 2, 3 lands on kiwi uh, so if I print fruit after I've done that, you can see that uh, uh, the kiwi is missing. And that's exactly what we want to see in using the pop method. And we can also remove an item by name by using the remove method, or, or by value I should say. So say we wanted to remove apple. Um, the re if we issue a, a remove statement, it'll remove the first instance of um, that value from the array. So if I say fruit.removeapple and I print that one out, uh, it's going to uh, remove the first one. So you can see the first element in the array is gone. The second one is still there. And so um, that is how you use the remove method. And then uh, from there, uh, we can go ahead and look at um, the uh, reverse method which is to reverse the order of the array um, and uh, so that's going to re reverse the elements as they are in the array so it's not a sort but it reverses the order according to the order that they were uh, they were originally uh, put into the array and after that comes the most important and most useful of all the methods which I will put a comment on here um, just to uh, celebrate that fact and that is the the sort method which doesn't seem like a big deal to a lot of uh, programmers however 
if you spend a lot of time in a language that does not have a sort method, um, you're constantly having to write your own sort uh, methods or functions in order to sort arrays. And the sort function in, in uh, Python is really nice and fast. I believe it is based off of the quick sort algorithm. And you can use it just by saying dot sort, which is fantastic. That'll sort your array uh, according to the values. And uh, so if you wanted to uh, sort it in, in descending order, you can say reverse equals true. And if I hit F5 there, you can see it also sorts it. If you're, I tell you, if you're doing a project with, you know, half a million uh, uh, part numbers on a manufacturing assembly and you have to use sort methods uh, to for indexing and things like that, uh, this is absolutely fantastic to be able to do it this way. So. You can also sort, of course, using numeric values, uh, which is what we can see here. And that's what we wanted to see. Uh, we could remove the reverse equals true if we wanted to sort those costs in ascending order. And there you have it. There's our costs sorted as we want to see them. And that is how you use array methods in Python. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion about array methods in Python. And I hope that you can use these uh, methods in, in your project in order to make a better solution. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And click on the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content that goes up on the channel. If you have questions or comments about what you saw today, please uh, uh, make your comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to, uh, to answer all of the questions that you might have uh, about uh, this topic. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll talk to you next time.